Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. Today I wanted to talk about how to go from bedridden to living. All right, I'll get into that in a minute. Breathe in the smiles, exhale the frowns. Breathe in the confidence, exhale the doubt and fear. All right. So from bedridden to living. And so, you know, I had somebody message me today who said, you know, Dan, some of these things that you post are really disheartening. I'm at a point now where I can't do anything. I'm bedridden. I'm not able to do this, 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 and this. And I'm not making fun of this person whatsoever. But they're not able to do all sorts of normal daily living activities. And sometimes, you know, when I say think, act, and behave as if you're already okay, they go, but I can't. Right? So first thing I'll say is that in the context of that one statement, think, act, and behave as if you're already okay, that's not an all-encompassing solution. That's not like, well, just do this and you'll be better. This one thing will get you out of bed and back to living life by tomorrow. None of these quotes or statements or even these videos have the complete context of what's involved in recovering. If you want a much more complete picture, don't just look at a meme and say, this is impossible, it's disrespectful, it's very disheartening, and there's no way I can do it. Instead, go to dansfaststart.com. It's about 15 videos, and it will literally walk you from soup to nuts, A to Z, what's causing symptoms all the way through what to do about it. But I can assure you this, we have lots of people going from bedridden to getting back to life. Lots of people, right? It's possible. Now, is it difficult? Yes. Does the phrase, you know, go do normal things, go live your life, does that piss you off? Hell yeah, it does. Because you're saying, I can't. So what I'm going to suggest you do is do what you can within the limits of your current situation. All right? You have limitations. I get it. But within that, can you start to think better? Yeah. Can you start to fear less, freak out less? Yeah. Can you start to shift your attention away from the symptoms, even though they got you in bed, to other things? Can you find ways with your phone, with the television, with books, with a drawing pad, with a knitting set of needles and some yarn to get your head out of suffering and symptoms and back into engaging your brain in something else? Now, people will say, well, I don't know what to do. Virtually anything else is better than laying in bed, suffering, ruminating on how bad your life is and how it's never going to change. Virtually anything will be better than that. So, is it hard? Absolutely. No doubt. I will never diminish anybody's experience by saying, ah, you're overreacting. It's not so bad. Come on. If the... If the brain's creating the pain, then it can't hurt that bad. Nope. Never, ever, ever going to say that. That's not true. Your experience, especially if you're bedridden, sucks. But I can tell you that there's not a prison wall around the bed. And if there is, it's made out of one fear. One thing, fear. Fear is the, the walls around the prison that's keeping you locked in that bedroom. No, Dan, it's the symptoms. Yeah, but the symptoms are created by the fear, the conscious fear, the subconscious fear, the perception of danger. So instead of saying, this is impossible, you're insulting me with your meme, no, ask yourself, well, I can't do everything Dan recommends because I can't go out and, you know, take a walk around the block yet. Um... What can I do? 
well, I can think differently. I can allow myself to feel the emotions without getting lost in the story, without judging myself harshly. Can I learn to relax my body and breathe? Can I start to implement the I'm good concept? Let's say you got to roll over. I'm good, roll over, instead of laying there terrified to move. Or I'm good, going to get up and go to the bathroom, as opposed to laying there terrified to get up and go to the bathroom. Right? I'm good, get up, go to the kitchen, make yourself something to eat. You can do those things, even if you are mostly or completely bedridden. If you have people, caretakers who are helping you out, family, friends, a caregiver, you can still enjoy conversation. And instead of talking about your pain and how bad it is and what, how awful it is and it's never going to change, which none of that conversation is useful or helpful, instead, how about talking to the people around you and saying, hey, tell me what's going on in your world. Tell me something funny that happened today or yesterday. What brings you joy? What makes you smile? What brings you a sense of purpose? Engage in the people around you. Build some social connections if you have them. And if there's nobody there and you're really caring for yourself, is there somebody you can call? Is there somebody you can FaceTime, do a video chat with over the phone? Right? There's things you can do even while stuck in bed. And I get how sometimes the symptoms are just so colorful that they keep you in bed. And then from there, the fear keeps you terrified to do anything more because you don't want the symptoms to go up that high again. And so we start to avoid, 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 and our world shrinks, shrinks, shrinks until we're stuck in bed. And I'm not judging anybody for this happening because I've met some really freaking amazing people who ended up in bed rest. They were just doing their best to make it through the day. And avoidance was their strategy to, oh, I don't want to feel that again. That was horrific. And I get it. But there are things you can do in bed. You know, watch the Fast Start playlist. There's a video called 24 Messages of Safety. Or no, Consistent Messages of Safety, 24 Examples. Right? And then out of them, say, which ones can I do? Inevitably, you're going to find more that you can do than that you can't do. Yeah, no, um, you know, resume all normal activities. That's one of Dr. Sarno's original 12 daily reminders. If you're laying in bed, good luck with that one, right? You're saying, Dan, that's impossible. Don't tell me that. But what can you do? Think psychologically. Talk to your brain. Have a better conversation. Reassure yourself and your scared brain that you're going to be okay. Maybe you're not okay right now, and I get that. But you're going to be. Because this stuff works, and it's very predictable. It's not just possible for you to recover and get out of bed and start living life. It's probable when you implement. So, if you are down in the dumps, really, really feeling like your symptoms own you, and you're bedridden or mostly bedridden, or even some people who are housebound, saying, I can't live my life, I can't do this, I can't do that. Think about joining the group if you can, because we often find people saying, you know, I was saying no to invitations to go here, go there, do this, do that, see somebody. I've been saying no for however long, months, years, decades. But as people start to say yes, and I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go have lunch with my sister. I'm going to go have dinner with my parents. I'm going to say yes to life. Inevitably, the stories that people share in the beginning of our group coaching calls is that they're so darn glad they did it. And yeah, maybe symptoms came along for the ride, but they did it. And they're proud of themselves. And they actually enjoyed themselves getting out of the house, getting out of the bed. So it is possible. Find, an, find another way besides thinking about your symptoms and pains. Find another way to engage your brain in something else other than that. Read a book. Do Sudoku puzzles. Play a board game with somebody. Play solitaire on the bed. 
do something else other than suffer. It is possible to go from bed rest to full recovery. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen many times. So, what do you guys think? I know you can do it. So I'm going to wrap this up. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. And uh, as always, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.